In this section, we will introduce the benefits and drawbacks related to real-time OS for embedded systems equipped with multiple cores. First, let's discuss SMP-type multi-core systems. The particular feature of SMP-type is that the RTOS assigns executable tasks to any available CPU. As a result, it's impossible to predict which CPU will execute a given task until that task is assigned. To put it another way, any task can be run on any CPU. Two advantages to this are that the load balance can be handled dynamically and software can be developed without concern for which CPU will be running it. Thus, it's often said to be very easy to migrate from a single core system to a multi-core one. On the other hand, one disadvantage is poor real-time performance. One problem is with the cache. As this figure shows, we don't know which CPU will be running task 2, so every task's execute code and data are stored in shared memory. And when the task is run, they are loaded into the cache. As a result, when the CPU tries to run a task, if the execute code and data aren't in the cache, there will be a cache mishit. And if the task running on CPU 1 moves to CPU 3, a cache migration will occur. This then will lead to a drop in real-time performance. What's more, to preserve consistency between all the cache contents, a circuit called cache coherence is implemented. When cache coherence is executed, the CPU stalls. This is another source of poor real-time performance. And finally, there are issues that aren't limited to SMP. Many SMP systems also include MMU. If a mishit occurs in the internal TLB in this MMU, the CPU will stall again. Naturally, this also leads to drops in real-time performance. Next, I'd like to discuss AMP. The primary feature of AMP is that each CPU is assigned specific functions. To put that another way, the software that will run on each CPU is already determined. And as shown in the figure, the RTOS also differs per CPU, and indeed not using RTOS is not a problem. Now, in terms of disadvantages, when developing a program, it's absolutely necessary to determine the CPU. As a result, you have to be aware of the executing CPU when planning a program. When operating the system, for example, if CPU 2 has a heavy load and CPU 3 has a light load, moving the task executing on CPU 2 to CPU 3 could very well require a major update to the program. An advantage, though, is that the real-time performance is high. The reason for this is there is no cache. Since software is fixed for each CPU, the cache can be eliminated. As a result, the issues I explained earlier that the cache causes with real-time performance are also eliminated. However, even with AMP types, if an MMU is used, the internal TLB can still miss hit, causing CPU stalling, so please keep that in mind. There is one more problem. For example, what do we do if task 2 and task 3 in this figure want to communicate or synchronize? As this figure shows, tasks 2 and 3 are completely separate as software. So inter-task communication and synchronization are extremely difficult to implement. In this situation, introducing the upcoming system can be of enormous benefit. The benefits can be seen here. As shown in this figure, each task is assigned to a specific CPU. However, the RTOS is arranged across the CPUs. This type of RTOS is what we call a multi-core ready RTOS. When using multi-core ready RTOS, since task 2 and task 3 are both assigned to the same CPU, inter-task communication and synchronization can be done using event flags, semaphores, and mailboxes, just like with single core RTOS. What's more, as here, 
tasks 0 and 3 are on different CPUs, but since they are managed by the same RTOS, intertask communication and synchronization can be done using event flags, semaphores, and mailboxes in exactly the same way. That is one benefit of using multi-core ready RTOS. This kind of structure means that planning for each task no longer depends on the CPU. Why? Because task planning can be done using a single RTOS API. Let's say, for example, that CPU 0 has a heavy load and CPU 1 has a light load. In this situation, if we want to transfer task 1 from CPU 0 to CPU 1, there's no need to significantly update the program at all. So then another benefit of using multi-core ready RTOS is that it makes load balance easy. This all means that installing multi-core ready RTOS makes it easier to develop software for multi-core systems. But there is one problem, that is overhead is quite large. This table shows a certain multi-core system. As you see here, each CPU has local memory installed. What's more, shared RAM is also installed like so. Typically, the RTOS code is located on every CPU. In other words, RTOS processing is executed on every CPU. Also, there's something called the RTOS management block. The management block, as you can see in the figure, stores all the information vital for RTOS operation, such as the event management table, the semaphore management table, the event weight and semaphore weight queues, as well as the TCB and ready queues. All of this needs to be shared, so it's stored on shared RAM, like this. Consistency is maintained by each CPU accessing the management block. As a result, whenever a CPU accesses the management block, it puts a lock on the contents. This is the cause of the overhead. Let's talk a little more about that overhead. This chart shows API execution time, comparing execution time between single core RTOS and multi core ready RTOS. The execution time measured was for the semaphore release API. If there is a dispatch when the semaphore release API is executed, the single core RTOS takes 300 cycles for execution time, and the multi core ready RTOS takes 650. What explains that difference? As discussed earlier, in multi core ready RTOS, the management block is locked during access because it's accessible to multiple cores, leading to overhead. Furthermore, as I mentioned, the tasks running on different CPUs are also communicating and synchronizing, so running those APIs can cause this process to take 900 cycles. So I think it's clear that the increased overhead from multi-core ready RTOS can be an enormous problem. There is one more problem. That is, worst case execution time values cannot be guaranteed. In other words, as written here, in systems of three or more CPUs, starvation and problems with both inter- and intra-CPU exception control can lead to undefined worst-case execution times or a massive overhead if software is developed to allow them to be defined. An explanation of starvation and inter- and intra-CPU exception control problems would take too long here, so please see the supplementary report for more details. So clearly, multi-core ready RTOS is extremely easy to use on AMP systems. But on the other hand, the overhead is much too large, and if there are three or more CPUs, there is a real problem with unpredictable worst-case execution times. So that finishes my talk on multi-core ready RTOS. Let me just sum up some key points. One benefit is that tasks running on different CPUs can use APIs for intertask communication and synchronization. What's more, tasks running on one CPU can be moved to another without significant updates to architecture, and load distribution can be implemented easily. In contrast to these handy functions, 
overhead is quite large due to the lock needed when accessing the management information. Another problem is, in systems with three or more CPUs, worst case execution times can't be defined, or if software is structured to define them, the resulting overhead is huge. So that's all for conventional multi-core ready real-time OS. Finally, I'd like to briefly introduce our Hardware Real-Time OS. Hardware Real-Time OS is Renesis original technology, implementing RTOS completely in hardware. Our hardware RTOS has full multi-core support. As a key feature, while conventional software RTOS is unable to guarantee worst case execution times for three or more CPU systems, Hardware Real-Time OS can absolutely guarantee these values while offering incredibly low interrupt latency. All of this means it's suitable for embedded systems requiring the highest real-time performance. For more details, please see the Renesis Electronics website.